So first it was the Fire Stick, now it's Android, Google and Amazon, if you haven't known already, are cracking down on sideloading third party applications and why this not being an immediate thing in the next year or so, you're going to see your ability to sideload applications go away and this might be a permanent thing. But I'm here to tell you that there's always a workaround, there's always ways to get your content and in this video, I will show you three powerful ways to fight back and stay in control of your setup. So we're going to jump right into it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's go. Let's jump into number one, Plex. If you're someone that's never used Plex, think of it as your own personal Netflix. Now with Plex, you can host your own media, stream your movies, TV shows, music, on any device and with Plex, you can even share with friends. So if you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a while, I've done a ton of Plex setup videos and I'll probably start doing some more just to show the versatility of Plex. Now the best part of Plex is that it doesn't depend on side loading. With Plex, you can install it directly from an app store. It's an official application. So if Google or Amazon even tighten down on third party applications, you can still install Plex. It's available across most devices. You Android devices, which includes your Fire TV stick, iOS devices, smart TVs, just any device out there, Plex is gonna be available. Not only are you able to build your own library, add your movies, add your TV shows, add your personal videos, but Plex have a free live area built into their apps that you can browse hundreds and thousands of hours of content. In addition, Plex also has video on demand. So while Amazon and Google tighten their restriction, Plex is gonna be the same, but I wouldn't just tell you that Plex is great without giving you the pros and cons. So let's start out with the pros. Plex is gonna work almost everywhere. You're not tied to one device. Plex is gonna let you organize your own content, your library, artwork, trailers, and metadata. Plex is also going to have official support, so it's not an app that's just going to disappear in the next year. This has been running for a long time, and it's going to stay running for a long time. Plex, of course, includes extras like free ad support television as well as live TV. As far as the cons, you can use Plex as a standalone application. You install it, you watch your content, that's it. However, if you want to add your own media server, or if you want to set up your own media server, it can get a little bit technical. And like I said, I've done videos on this. And I'll probably start doing some more just to help you guys out. So remote streaming, so streaming on your iPhone, stuff like that on the go, may need a Plex Pass, which is a paid service. And if you watch my Plex setup, I'll kind of go in more details on that. And lastly, if your server or your internet service goes down, so does your Plex. Um, with Plex, you need an internet connection to stream outside your household, and that's just a fact. So while Google and Amazon tighten the restrictions, Plex is going to stay one step ahead because you're running your own content on your own terms. Number two is going to be Kodi. Now, if you've been around streaming for a while, you know that Kodi is legendary. It's completely open source, super customizable, and works with a ton of add-ons. So if you've been with the channel for a while, you know that when I started out really Kodi heavy, you used to dive into the different builds, the different add-ons, customizations. But with YouTube's terms and conditions, a lot of those videos had to be removed. Kodi, just like Plex, is an official application. Kodi is a media player. So even if Google and Amazon remove third-party applications, the ability to silo third-party applications, you're still gonna be able to get Kodi from the official app store. Also, just like Plex for Kodi, you can install directly on most devices that you're not at the mercy of any restrictions. So again, with Kodi, you can get it on your Apple devices, Android devices, your smartphones, your PC. So Kodi Kodi is going to be widely available. And again, with Kodi, you have a ton of add-ons that you can add, different skins, different builds. Again, can't get into that on this video, but just know that there's plenty of options out there for Kodi for you to stream your content. So let's jump into the pros and cons of Kodi again. The pros, 100% free, it's open source, has a huge library of add-ons and skins and customization that I'm sure you can just Google and find some of that information. Can play nearly any media format, so whether it's 4K, 1080, P, whether it's .mov, mp4, it's going to be um, compatible. Works offline if you're running local content. So if you're in your household, you should be able to, to load Kodi on different devices around your house as long as they're on the same network. As far as the cons, setup can be a little bit intimidating for beginners. You install Kodi and then you're sitting on it. What do I do now? So um, that's going to be just a learning curve. Um, 
Additionally, some add-ons are unofficial, may not always be reliable. So add-ons, we know from past that Cody add-ons are gonna come, they're gonna go, and that's just the nature of the beast. And lastly, performance varies depending on device it's installed on. Your streaming capability is as good as the device that it's on. So make sure you put it on a solid device. So just a tip, Kodi works with VPN really well. That way you can unlock more content safely and just keep your activity private. And with that, I'm gonna segue. If you're in the market for a VPN, check the description for the two VPN services that I use and recommend. Um, they are IPVanish and NordVPN. If you have any questions about any one of those services, let me know in the comment section. And number three is gonna switch to an AOSP device or Android open source project. These devices run Android, but they're not certified by Google, which means they don't come with the full Google support. So with the open source Android, you do have the ability. That's not gonna go away. It's not being monitored by Google. Um, third party installation is gonna be there for the future. Um, but there are some pros and cons that we're gonna get into. But with AOSP, what does it mean for you? It means freedom. You can sideload, you can install custom launchers, run third party applications without worrying about Amazon or Google cutting you off. As far as the pros, no forced Google or Amazon ecosystem, so you don't have to worry about that shutting down. Total freedom to sideload app and use alternative app stores as you may. Many devices are cheaper um, than name brand streamers. So you can go out, you can get some of the cheap Chinese boxes. They do have some nice devices that comes with AOSP. And I, I mentioned the Buzz TV devices. They're a little bit pricey, but with the hardware that's underneath the hood, some of it might be worth looking into. And another pro is that these devices often come with extra capabilities, extra ports, expanded storage capability, as well as flexibility. As far as the cons, not all AOSP devices are reliable. There is a lot actually. So you might get updates on one for a year. The other one, you might get it for 10 years. The other one, you might get six months. So just do your research before you purchase the device. Updates are slower and may not happen at all. So with the updates to the AOSP devices, they are still being pushed by Google, but it's up to that manufacturer's discretion to force that update or push that update up to that device. So how I like to break it down is the Buzz TV Power Station 6, for example. Google might push a security patch for January 2025. However, Buzz might not release that to the devices until March or April. So it kind of depends on the schedule of the manufacturer. The last thing, and a lot of you guys are concerned about it, some models may have questionable security. And this is where I'm gonna say research, research, research. Look into a company that you trust, company that's uh, got a reputation, and just know that some devices you may have to set up burner accounts for and just tread real lightly. Google and Amazon might be trying to shut things down, but you've still got options. Whether you're building your own media hub with Plex, customizing everything with Kodi, or going full open source with AOSP, you don't have to give up your streaming freedom. So which one of these do you think is the best solution? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Of course, I love to hear it. Also, any videos that you guys would like for me to do, drop that in the comment section as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.